Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well right now. Um, I know it sometimes gets boring in quarantine, so I hope I can make this uh, presentation as fast as possible. So today I'm going to be talking about Denver's as computing agents. Uh, so at the beginning, I just want to give you some information about the history of uh, them dreamers and how they came to be. So let's just say that they were first just known as uh, cascade polymers, that they are just tri-dimensional structures, highly organized as we just uh, were taught in class. Uh, they first appeared in 1978, and then from 1978 to the 1990s, they, the, the research in them dreamers kind of flourished during that time period which in 1983, Tumalia et al. reported the, the very interesting type of, of dendrimers that is highly used in medicine right now, uh, which is the polyamidoamines or the PAMAM dendrimers, which is just prepared from uh, a mixture of amines and amides. We're gonna see the structure of PAMAM later in this presentation, but I just wanted to, get, wanted to give you the history. Then, so a lot of other dendrimer types were uh, reported in that time period, and in general, these molecules were widely known as just like tree or boral or cascade shaped polymers, but we just know that they are of super organized hyperbranched polymers. So, a dendrimer uh, is a nano sized radially symmetric molecule with a well defined and homogeneous uh, structure. They're hyperbranched polymers, but with highly organized or exquisite control of them. Uh, the structure of the dendrimer kind of stems from the core, and then from that central structure, you can start branching out, and those branches are called the dendrons, as, as you can see here. And the, within those dendrons and the space between the core and the, and the branches, you can see that there are some internal voids uh, and uh, peripheral uh, end groups, or some, sometimes functional end groups, um, occur because of this interaction. This is going to be really important to remember later in the presentation because this is what's going to give the dendrimers the reputation that they have right now in the medical field. So, cascade reactions are the foundation of dendrimer synthesis because, as you can see in both types of, uh, of synthesis, there are just molecules after molecules added to each other in order to make the branching and make the dendrimer. However, this addition can happen, can come in two flavors. The diversion and conversion synthesis approaches are kind of different, but they have the same principle and they yield exactly, well, not exactly, but they kind of like yield the same thing. Um, so for example, the, the diversion approach is that you start from the core and then you start branching out, which was what's been used in the early periods when, when this, when this, um, when this type of polymer was first invented. However, in the convergent approach, which is kind of like more used today, uh, you start from the branches and then you make it to the core at the end. The convergent approach gives you a slight advantage because in this strategy, the final generation number is predetermined because you're, you've already made the branches, the outer, the outer layer, and then you're just bringing everything into the core at the end. So why do we care about this? Let's just start by saying that the dendritic branching that has been happening in both approaches uh, leads to semi-globular and globular configurations with large number of fun terminal function groups, which is kind of like the basis of all the fun stuff that can be done with dendrimers. Because when you have those voids between the, uh, the core and the, the branches, if you have something that is small enough, either organic or inorganic, it doesn't matter at this point, you can put it in there, and by controlling the terminal function groups, you can design the dendrimer in order to protect the, the material inside or the drug inside, for example, from whichever environment you want it to be in. So for example, here, here's that PAM AM dendrimer or the polyamidamine uh, polymer. You can see that it's, it's just like a branching of amides and amines all together with the core in the middle. And then as the generation increases, you can see that the amount of branching in, in, the, in the molecule increases as well. And then you can see here that there is this internal cavity or the void space where, where if you have something, you can put it in there and design all those branches or the terminal branches here to kind of like fit in with the environment that this complex between the drug and the polymer is going to reside in. So this leads us to talk about dendrimers in drug administration. So there was a, a report of, about the, the use of PAM, a um, dendrimer generation three, and the transport, the transport of Pranolol to the adenocarcinoma cell line, CACO2. 
propranolol is a beta blocker, which is used in T3 high blood pressure and sometimes chest pain. And the adenocarcinoma is a type of cancer that uh, starts in the mucus producing glandular cells in your body. And, and this exists in a lot of different cancer types in our bodies, such as breast cancer and prostate cancer. So when you make this dendrum of drug complex, it involves the emphysitosis mediated trans epithelial transport to increase the drug solubility and bypass the drug efflux transporter, which improves the drug bioavailability. So this was a lot of terms. So let's just like break that down a little bit using this graph. So when you when first ingested, the complex just goes through the mucus layer and the epithelial layer which just bypasses a lot of the transport blockers that would have blocked that drug from going inside the cell. So that's what increases the solubility and improving the drug bioavailability. Once the complex passes the epithelial layer, it gets endocytosed using an endosome inside the cell, which then, because of the enzyme inside of the endosome, the complex then dissociates, which releases the drug inside the cell, which gets inside the nucleus and alters the transcription of the cell. In addition, the PAM AM dendrinors, they were also used in, as drug carriers of ketoprofen and uh, pemphitesin. Ketoprofen is uh, a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug, and, and campathosin is a, a cancer drug. And then the corresponding studies in vitro and in vivo of both these uh, complexes showed that the dendrinor molecules were quite capable of increasing the solubility of the drug in water. And and eliminating the negative effect in the gastrointestinal tract. So for one, PAM, AM, dendrinor ketoprofen complex had also a favorable effect in terms of the anti-inflammatory, antipyretic, and the analgesic properties of the drug. While in the complex with campethacin, it showed a lot of promising results when it comes to the to anti-cancer therapy, including lung, prostate, breast, colon, stomach, and so on and so on. Those improvements of the drug just came from the protection that the complex gave the drug when it's inside the, the, the body environment, which it wouldn't have had otherwise. So now let's talk about dendrimers as anti-cancer drug carriers. But before we talk about the dendrimers themselves, I, I want to give you a little bit of information about cancer cells because they have unique pathophysiological traits, such as extensive angiogenesis, which is the ability of the tumor to create new blood vessels in order to feed itself. This angiogenesis results in two things, hypervascularization, which is the increased permeability of tumor vasculature, and the limited lymphatic drainage. That's why it gets big, because you're getting more blood in, but you're not draining anything out. So this leads the phenomenon called enhanced permeation and retention, or ATR for short, which is characterized by two things, passive targeting of the tumor cell and selective accumulation of macromolecules in the tumor tissue, which is a two-edged sword because the tumor to get a lot of the proteins and glucose molecules in the blood to get to reside in it, we can use that characteristic in order to feed it the drug that is going to kill it. So let's talk now about the dendrobin themselves. So a term that we need to know is the pharmacokinetics of the, of the medicine. The pharmacokinetics is just what the body does to a drug when it's ingested. So to explain upon that, it's uh, the movement of the drug into, through, and out of the body, meaning that it's the time force of its absorption, bioavailability, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So, and this is one of the most important things when it comes for a cancer drug, because circulation time, organ uptake, and tumor accumulation are all critical factors for the efficiency of in vivo uh, with a polymer drug delivery system. Because if you cannot keep your, your molecule or your drug long enough inside the body in order to reach the tumor cell, then administering the drug is, is just useless. But then in 2005, it was report, reported that the pharmacokinetics of a bowtie dendrimer based on polyethylene glycol or PEG and 2,2-bis-hydroxymethyl propanoic acid with very molecular weights and chain numbers that kind of shows the effects of uh, molecular weight and architecture when it comes to the duration or the half-life of the, of the drug in the, in the body. So as we can see here, as the molecular weight of the drug or the complex increases, the circulation time or the half-life increases as well. So this is an example of how the complex between a polymer and a drug can increase its circulation time in the, inside the body in order to, to increase its effects. 
there is a, a promising outlook in there because the drugs conjugated with polymers from different studies showed um, lengthening half-life as we just seen, higher stability, water solubility, decreased immunogenicity, which is the ability to induce the humoral or uh, cell-mediated immune responses, and um, increased antigenicity, which is the capacity of a chemical structure to bind specifically um, to a receptor. So, and sometimes when it comes to adaptive immunity, those receptors lie within the T cell and the antibodies of the B cells. It also showed reduced systemic toxicity and selective accumulation in solid tumors. Uh, this is all because you can design the terminal function groups the way you want in order to achieve all these characters. So now give it some thought. Um, try to define pharmacokinetics for yourself and just think about how can it be improved for cancer drugs conjugated with dendrobus. In other words, how the dendromer could be designed in order to, to improve it. And now this is just a literature side of the page. I hope that you like uh, this presentation and I hope that you found it useful. I hope you were entertained during this presentation and it made it a little bit fun for you. And uh, I hope you continue doing well in, during this crisis. We're all together in this and uh, I'm looking forward to see all of your presentations. Bye guys. <laughs>